This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Are you interested in many things? Are you accomplished across a spectrum of interests? Have you ever found yourself composing a tune while etching a still life in your personally constructed yurt? Then you may be a polymath. I'm Jamie Alcroft, here with Laura Rogenkamp, welcoming polymaths Zach Selwyn, Ted Willett, and Nomad. And now, a watch me polymathematically toss it to our host, Louise Palenka. Wheezy? Caught it, Jamie. Nice toss. Whose voice was that? <laughs> uh, that was just somebody from uh, from somewhere. Some mythical <laughs> character. Yeah. 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 Right. Somewhere from another dimension. All right. Well, Maybe. roll the I dice. Like <laughs> okay. I want to talk about it. That, that wasn't your real voice? No, it wasn't your voice. That <laughs> was. Yes, Jamie. Our guests this week are all polymaths. What is a polymath? The dictionary <laughs> definition of a polymath is a very learned person of encyclopedic knowledge Anyone can be a polymath as long as he or she has the right motivation, or they. A polymath is not necessarily a brain. In fact, a polymath usually does not think of his or herself or their self as being particularly smart, only curious. Joining us are actor, writer, musician, host, dinner guest, Zach Selwyn. Hello. Music director, composer, producer, speaker, teacher, podcaster, nomad, and marketer, writer, teacher, podcaster, uh, uh, tech startupper. Yes. Yes. Ted Willett, <laughs> welcome yeah, panel. For the last and may one. I add, I believe that Lori and Jamie and I are also card carrying polymaths. My card does not say polymath, but it does say host, filmmaker, producer, writer. And that was me picking out like four of the things that I. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Your yeah. four top stuff. Four, in, yeah, you didn't put uh, croquet in there or yeah. uh, horseshoe throwing <laughs> or anything or like tap that. Tap dancing. Or the, yeah, no. fam- fabulous. Or drummer, and I, drummer. Yeah, uh-huh. you could have put yeah, drummer. Yeah, there was in there. a lot of stuff. I when I read that, I go, oh, is she? D- are you specifically leaving things out, or is it just because yeah. those are the things you're doing right you now? You have to, Laura. Wow. You don't want to intimidate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this is really great to learn that I'm a polymath. I always thought that I just couldn't hold a job. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. just it's so rev- revelationary to so me. So let's go I'm around. Just, let's go I'm around really, the room, like on your right. business card or in your Twitter bio. What does or should it say? Jamie Alcroft, comedian, comedy writer, voiceover actor, uh, silversmith. Sure. <laughs> which follows suit, and 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 that's that, that would be about that's it. That's a lot. That would be about it, and and you know, and I like to read. Reader. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, okay. Points. So I, but I wouldn't put that on my card. Well, reader, lo- because everyone card. reading people it read too much into that. Yeah, they yeah. think that you're gonna like <laughs> zap them. Yeah. Right, Zach. I, now Zach's impressive. See Zach. Yes. Zach's bio and his his web page gave me the idea for the concept of this show because he's just so all over everything. Yeah. So go ahead, Zach. What should people know about you? Wow. Uh, well, am I just gonna list off my things I've worked in recently? Start yeah. with Silver yeah, sure, just so you sure. can yeah, show I, us. I, start with that. I've shooed horses before. Yes. Okay. Uh, As have I. You're a, yeah. a fellow furrier. Growing up in Arizona. <laughs> uh, you know, I've been an actor. I've been a screenwriter. I've been a short story writer, a songwriter, a singer, a TV host. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, pretty much anything to do with entertainment business, I've done it. And, uh, you know, that's basically what we're here talking about. Because, yeah. I mean, it's it's at the point now in this business where you have to do everything. But when I started out and I was doing everything, everyone was like, you got to focus on one thing. You'll never right? get anywhere. I was like, but, you know, some days you wake up and you don't want to do the other stuff. Mm-hmm. You just want to do what you're feeling that day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I guess I just kind of go where the wind blows me. Yeah. And it's Today more, I'm a basketball player. All right. <laughs> and it's working. Yeah, it seems to be working so right. far. You just got traded to the Lakers, so congratulations. I did. Thank I think you. you're wearing yeah. the wrong kind of hat. Wrong hat. <laughs> yeah. uh, red wine connoisseur, but I would add to that, too. I like I like the red wine. Yeah, okay. he's, oh, he's, got the, he's got the right shirts. Oh, I Vintner. forgot. I forgot. Author. Yeah. Oh, I've written a book. Yeah. I've written a book now. I forgot you, about that. I think that. everyone should add tenor. Jeez. Just no matter what else they do, just <laughs> add tenor. tenor. Because yeah. sure. it can't be disproven, really. I wonder. Because we're frightened <laughs> enough. We're all tenors. Okay, Nomad. That's funny. Yeah. Well, let me just speak on that real quick. Mm-hmm. I have a great little quick story, anecdote, if you will. John Powell, the composer, mm-hmm. How to Train Your Dragon. I was working with him a couple years ago on Ferdinand, and uh, I was interviewing him for my podcast, The Career Musician. And we came up, you know, because John, a composer, like many composers, is, uh, you know, well-versed in many different styles. 
So he said his dad always told him the same thing. No, son, you have to focus. You can't do jazz and classical and mm -hmm. flamenco and this and that. You have to focus. And he said, no, 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 I ended up going everywhere because you become, the old adage is you become a jack of all, you know, jack of all trades, master yeah. of none, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's not true. You kind of become a master of a little bit of everything. Yeah. So a little bit of everything. What they used so, to call a renaissance person. They, yes. they, what, yeah. You know, and what you're also alluding to is that everything informs everything else. Yes. Because in life, everything's pulling from everything else. Exactly. Anyway, mm -hmm. and the way we learn in school is like you, you do English and then you do history and then you do math. But then later in life, you, you learn that these things are all interwoven. And in, like for history, in history, for example, and Zach hosts a history show about, which we're going to get to in a moment. Everything is in, is kind of oh, yeah. connected. And then you see these patterns and it's really beautiful. Right. So right. I don't think we have to compartmentalize all things yeah no Lori, exactly. w w please describe the nature of your polymathery oh boy uh <laughs> uh, well, uh fitness enthusiast i think would be on the top of the list um i think uh uh well now i say podcaster comedian uh stand-up comic writer uh and then also education specialist yeah and very good at making lists <laughs> but I've witnessed oh. you being funny while sitting down. Does it still work for the stand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Versatility. Yeah, yeah. Ted, what do you got going on Ted. over there? Well, I'm I'm liking the startup culture. I think if you're into startup culture, you're into a polymath space because you have to be. I think curiosity is definitely the prerequisite for both. And the more you're into, you know, dabbling in a lot of things, the more access you have to figuring out what's next and and i think being being into startups means you're interested in the future and you're interested in problems that we have today and how to solve them tomorrow so that's really what you're aiming mm -hmm. what i'm right. aiming for. and i can I like from personal experience i can attest to um the the more knowledge that you have when you're starting something up because I, I i was a founder of premier radio networks and i did every job right and that way, when you hired someone to do that job, you easily knew whether or not they were slacking. <laughs> like you could just look over there and it's like, that person's not really stapling. I, I know, I've stapled. <laughs> well, I, I you can know, collate uh, and that's not collating. Okay. <laughs> you know, slacking is a different term now. It means that you're working online. Right. <laughs> yeah. You're chatting about how you're much you hate your boss. <laughs> that's right. But startup really, it's yes. a cool term that means techie and everything, but it's, Startups have always meant if you're going to have a shoe business, you had to make a shoe. Like you right. had to start by making a shoe and then you would build up from there. And I was never good at the sales part of things or whatever. Right. So I was always sort of in the trenches with the creatives. Mm -hmm. But there were periods at the very beginning where I was doing everything. You have to dabble when yeah. you're when you're the single digit uh, co-founder of a startup. You have to be able to at least know your strengths, play into them but be willing to do anything. And also be be willing to really um, combine forces with people whose strengths, um, who, who are strong where you're weak. Exactly. And so yeah. everyone's playing to their strength. Mm -hmm. And also, I no, no assholes, because... Uh, <laughs> life's yeah. too short. Mm -hmm. Seldom, exactly. seldom works out. Go ahead, I Lori. have a question. Now, as far as polymath goes, does that mean like you're interested in a wide variety of fields? Or does that mean like if, like let's say like I'm a chef and I, I, I know how to do... Um, you know, like glazes and meats, but I also am interested in baking. Is that a polymath or is that no. like, are you talking about like, I'm a chef, but I also am interested in, you know, knife throwing. Is that a polymath? Like what, I guess. I think a polymath, a pain in the ass, a massive pain are lyrics from Hamilton. Hamilton. <laughs> that's, and, a, that's the first time I heard the word. Actually. Right. Uh. And so I think it means we're talking about Hamilton, which is that he was always writing, but he was also a statesman and he also really understood money which is something I do not understand, even how he understood it. So it's just your brain is operating. I think maybe it means even left and right hemispheres are equally. So maybe I'm not even a polymath because everything I do is creative. So, so you're creative, but mm. then you're also analytical in certain ways. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say, yes, though, you that are. running a podcast or something like that, you do need some analytical skills and yeah. logistics. Yeah. You need yeah. that. You're so programming. You're producing. You're right left brain, yeah. don't you think? Yeah, yeah, you're right. You have to do all the pre- and post-production. And, and it's a pain in the ass, too. That's <laughs> a pain. Yeah. And also running yeah. a business, you have to know how to do that, too. I think that, you know, well, you have Lori, to. Lori, I don't know how to make money doing this. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. I, you know, being, being, I said something before, but being a polymath is better than having a job, really. You know, because well. you're doing, you're following your, your <laughs> dreams. You're following your dreams. And with a startup, 
you're talking about following your dreams. Yeah. You're just be able to think free form and believe that whatever you want to achieve is achievable. You have to will it into th- existence. Yes. You yeah. ha- I was going to say, it's just the power of positive thinking. It's cyber thinking. It's all that stuff. Combined. That's why my last name is, is will it. Will it. Let's take a bet as to how yeah. many times you said that joke. Yeah. Ted. And, and <laughs> I, what, what I want to know is, did you change your name just so you could say that? <laughs> yeah, you did. Ted, make a note that we're going to do a future show on startups. Okay, I think that there we go. Right really now we're going to Google Zach yeah. Selwyn. And Zach is one of those guys that when you Google him, like, oh, the, your screen becomes magical because... You have a photograph of him on oh, the ride and oh, a playlist and hair and oh. Spotify and Namaste. You're all involved in the yeah. internet. Where'd that so hair go? The hair, I think it's under, <laughs> underneath. It's oh. under the hat. Zachariah Zach Selwyn, also known as simply Zachariah, is an American singer, songwriter, actor, host, and writer best known huh. for hosting the series America's Secret Slang. Guinness World Records gone wild, exclamation point. Yeah. Attack of the show, exclamation point. You're, so you're the guy on shows that are just like, Ugh. They all have exclamation points. I never and, noticed that. And, <laughs> and catch it, keep it. He also appeared as a contestant on the ESPN reality show Dream Job. What was your dream job? Well, that was a show in 2003 or four where they went around the country looking for the next sports center anchor just from basically unknown people. And I was, uh, wow, well, look at that. I was... Um, <laughs> It looks sporty. I was like dressing yeah. like Clint Eastwood. Is, no, he's the real nomad. That's so nomadic. That's a pretty badass did, wait, picture. Did, that was shooting is. a Discovery yeah. Channel series in Arizona. Okay. okay. Well, did Bo Derek give you that hat? <laughs> Maybe. Wait, Where did you Bo get Derek? that? <laughs> <laughs> way to keep the references current. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I think of somebody who wears a hat like that these oh, days. Oh, boy. You look like a young think red skeleton. I'll take it. Thank you. Another Another current reference. Uh, anyway, so that uh, show was to look for sports center anchors, and they went around the country, and twenty thousand people auditioned, and I was the runner-up on the show, and it all what? came down. Wow. Oh, that's that's like American Idol yeah. for sporty people. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I went in because I was doing a sketch comedy show, and one of my characters was a sportscaster who was just like out of his mind. And I went in, and I did that character at the audition, just thinking, <laughs> "Yeah, this is stupid. This will never go anywhere." And they were like, "You're really good. Can you do that again?" And next thing you know, I'm in New York, and I'm like, "Going on oh, Good Morning great. America." I was how like, does well, he, how does he sound? I want to change my life. Can we hear how he sounds? Yeah, the guy, let's see, it was always yeah. like, uh, and Sean Dunstan lines one into the corner. <laughs> He's rounding first, and he slides on the second with a stand-up double. <laughs> <laughs> so if you ever know that a stand-up double, you can't slide, you know. Yeah. It's just like there's a little <laughs> yeah. senility there yeah. that you, you, this you character did. Counterintuitive. You get well, then I did that character, and the guy's like, all right, can, can, can you tone it down a little bit? So I did, and I was actually pretty good at it. And, uh, <laughs> but then I went on the show. Everyone was in these suits, and they were all buttoned up, short-haired kind of ESPN guys. And I sure. came in with, like, long hair and a nudie suit looking like it was 1974, <laughs> and I was stepping out of the Ryman <laughs> in Nashville. And I was like, this is who I am. And then by the third episode, I had short hair and a suit on. You know, it's ESPN. You got to sure. clean up. Yeah, <laughs> you got to clean it up. But it changed my life. So that was that, was that job. That that's, was a long time ago. Really- and it then you, like and fun. so then people saw that you were hosty and that you could do that kind of stuff. So you started getting cast in shows like yeah. America's Secret Slang. Yep. Mm. So give us an example. What what is that show? Was a really great show. It was on the History Channel. Um, I look so young there. Oh, there you are with your shorty ESPN here. Yeah, that's okay. it. And uh, and it's we're, it's terms like. So this is terms like look. You can see all of them in the back there. You know. Um, yeah. Like, fly, oh, off the fly off like, the handle. Fly off. Like don't make Macho. me fly off the handle here. Right. You know that comes from like chopping wood, right. oh, in the old yeah. days. The yeah. axe handle would fly off, and that became like a thing, or people not were getting good. It, or not, not a good, good thing. Uh, one of the ones I really liked was a basket case. Okay, you know, which was actually I think for World War One, the people who would get hurt um, in the battlefields would come back, and if they were mentally damaged, which we now call post traumatic stress syndrome, mm-hmm. they would say the one thing that would calm these people down was basket weaving. Oh. So if you were like. Oh, suffering wow. from PTSD, they'd give yeah. you basket material and say, go make a basket. And oh, then, so therefore, you, you were a basket case. You weren't inserted into a basket. Oh. <laughs> right. You weren't put in a basket. Maybe some of them were, but. Okay. So, so that, you, that's the kind of awesome. stuff we covered on that show. It was three seasons on History Channel. And, How many uh, reenactors have you met? Oh, a few. The Civil War guys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I was great. watching some of it. And it was like, oh, my God, he's 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 hanging out with reenactors. Yeah. there's They're all over the place. And they're all experts on the entire, like, the Civil Not War everything. and, you know, the sure. Old West. And, you know. That's everything. crazy. It so, did you do you remember everything you learn when you're hosting a show? Like Not that? at all. Not at all. Okay. <laughs> no, I, that was a lot of material, uh, but it was that was a great show. That was really fun. 
That sounds good. Now we're going to go to yeah. Zachary so, or ZachSelman.com. You are someone who has a website that you keep up to date. And so I was impressed by this because a lot of people. Well, yeah, people say give up on the website, but I think there's just so much stuff on there. Right. But you've got yeah. your Twitter feed. And so describe it what, what, right. to us this, what you've got. First of all, this needs to be updated. Right. I mean, it's an old website. Mm-hmm. Right. I just can't, you know, I don't really. It's hard though, right? Because everyone updates Twitter and Facebook and all that. It's so Anyway, hard. so what do we so see when we go to your website? What do we got? We got the, my, one of my more recent music albums on the left with my band, Zachariah and the Lobos Riders. Oh. Um, we have my, for some reason, look, the Instagram page doesn't even like show up. There's an error. That's, that's oh, great. Okay. We have to adjust that. Um, <laughs> then there's short stories. None of the latest happenings. That's a short story I just wrote. And then below that is a song I wrote about an oh, artist. I read that story. It was very good. Oh, thank you. And below that, I was on the yeah, NFL network in April at the NFL draft with my band playing music. So it's like all the things that I'm, I guess, doing kind of come in that feed. So this is good for a polymath to do because then you have a place to hang out with yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Talk about your right. various projects. Right, right, right. So, you know, I mean, I, I look at the numbers sometimes and maybe if I get 150 views a day, it's like a great day. But like when I released that short story, it bumped up to like 650 and I was like, all right. That yeah, story is amazing good. and we're going to attention. address it later in the show. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, that story is insane. But content is king is what, the, you know. Just putting stuff out content. all the time. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. And it's weird because you talk about this polymath thing. Like the, the week I put out my album, which is a pretty serious, you know, personal country rock record i also was hosting a comedic game show like i was like on stage going i'm the thing i'm the only guy who can step from this into like suddenly mm-hmm. i'm jamie fox on beach Shazam. so <laughs> it's it's i don't know it's weird you just never know where it's going to take you no but that's you no. know i mean you were probably a kid that was always dabbling in everything and now you're you're doing it so you throw yourself out there exactly yeah Absolutely. i have yet to drive uber <laughs> I'm not Nomad is with us. Have you driven Uber? No. Okay. No. Nomad is not. I, I have, my car was denied. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. So, so, somebody said that to me once. I was like, yeah, well, never mind. I'll one second. My, uh, so, <laughs> my Nomad attitude. is a composer, producer, studio guitarist, clinician, speaker, teacher, author. And if you go to nomadsplace.com, you can see what's going on. And I want you to describe what's going on. Right. Well, yeah. Okay, so uh, nomadsplace.com right now is just a placeholder. It's just a landing page. I noticed so, that. Yeah, it's just so thank you, uh, Louise. It's like for, email like, collection totally service. Totally rubbing it in. With some <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, it's just it's this. It's a temporary fix. Now, had you had me on the show like two years ago, my website would have been like Bing, Pam, oh. Poom, Pow, please shoot. So no excuse. It was all I'm errors. In, I'm all a, right. Exactly. Okay. I'm in the middle I'm in the middle of a, of a re, of an overhaul. But the website that we're focusing on is Nomad and Lola, which is my band, my right. duo. And you can't go there. Wife. So you can go there and that's Aww. pretty current and yeah. So and you guys are adorable. So go thing. to <laughs> Nomad and Lola if you will. And that's, that's where so I got cool. I was able to gather some bio information on right. you. Right. Um, you are the musical director for Kenny Baby Sa- Babyface Edmonds, correct? And have been so since two thousand and seven, right? So he must love you a lot. Nice, mm. I appreciate yeah, it. I, was, good I started with him as a guitarist and from two thousand seven to two thousand nine, and then I, oh. I was, uh, you know, uh, made the music director in two thousand nine. So I guess for ten years now, music director, twelve years total. Uh, it's awesome um, because first of all, Babyface uh, is. The consummate professional. He's a genius. Yeah, he's a ge- he's written songs for everybody. I always say he wrote the nineties. You know, it's <laughs> mm-hmm. kind of like true. Yeah. Uh, but not only that, he's a cool person. There's like you said, there's no ego. You know, he doesn't have any hyperbole around him. I not he, like he's, L.A. You know, ex- <laughs> well, no. I, so he's an anomaly in L.A. You That's know? great. But so I mean, it's really L.A. Nice. Reed. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, Jake. Jake <laughs> I get it. I That's get what it. I thought you meant. I get it. I always I thought you just meant pretentious L.A. in general. But no. So he's he's it's really amazing to work with him. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's been great, but it's, it's, um, part-time work. So we don't tour because none of us are young. You know, we're not like, you know, in our twenties, like, yeah, we're going to go on tour, man, you know, and chicks and rock and roll and all that stuff. No, that's not what we do. So we we're, <laughs> we're weekend warriors once one weekend a month, sometimes two weekends a month. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's about it. Occasionally every other year we go to Japan maybe, or a little Europe, you know, jaunt here and there, but nothing crazy like that. So, so. you fill that in with... Other pursuits, right? Lola, Wh- which is the Nomad and Lola deal as artists. Mm-hmm. That's who we are. We write and record and produce our own music. We do some performing, which we're going to be doing more in 2020. Uh, and then I compose, uh, you know, for TV and film. Wow. So right now I'm working on uh, five different film projects, which are like shorts or documentaries, just little things like that. And then I provide a ton of uh, 
underscore cues for TV shows like on the History Channel. So it, it wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if the show you were on we had some nomad guitars underneath there. You know, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, awesome. you know, uh, and again that's not that's not anything groundbreaking. Most musicians, especially here in LA. Uh, do that as kind of a. And uh, you said movie. that you worked on Ferdinand the movie. Or? Yes, I've oh, done okay. quite a few film scores with John Powell uh, in in the guitar chair. So John would call me to play guitar. I did, I've done Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Happy Feet One and Two, P.S. I Love You, Night and Day. Oh, you know wow. all these films, and and it's really great. I, uh, also with uh, Danny Elfman, I did uh, Men in Black Three. Uh, Danny only called me for that one project, but John <laughs> called me for a bunch of others. So it's nice. nice. And uh, you know, look. Being what I call a career musician in L.A. is not easy. And like you said, you got to hustle. You got to do a little bit of everything. So I just choose to to do a little bit of everything within the music field because I know that's where my strengths lie. Uh, I've tried my hand at acting a little tiny bit. Eh. You know, I could do a real good New Yorker. Hey, hey, don't. Hey, hey, hey. hey, <laughs> hey let, let me tell you Daddy. something. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, but other than that, I don't like to. Yeah. So I stay in my music lane. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. fascinating. Awesome. Yeah. And our friend Ted Willett uh, co-hosts the Trailer Junkies podcast. Trailer Junkies is where Jim and Ted discuss movies, discuss movie and TV trailers, and the consumer-facing part of the media marketing. Yes. They use Ted's industry knowledge, Jim's common sense, and their wit to break down movie marketing using trailers as their vehicle. Yeah. So you came to this from your background in marketing. Mm-hmm. And now it's become this cottage industry. Yeah. But you you and your partner do it. He doesn't even live in the same town as you. Right. He's up in Lompoc, which is the central coast. Is that what you guys call it? Santa Barbara and all that? Mm-hmm. Sure, why not? <laughs> yeah. There you are. So that was Photoshop. It's up there. That's what we say. It's up there. That's not, that's not Photoshop. That's me in mm-hmm. a, in a wheelbarrow. urban, no, an urban arrow. It's a, it's a, what is it? A cool. Dutch. It's a, it's a mm-hmm. bicycle. That seats to his two little children, but just me in there. So, nice. Um, oh, but, so he's riding a bike. Nice. So he, yeah, it's a bike when the two of you get oh. together, we bike around uh, the valley. That's hilarious. That's that awesome. is so cool. <laughs> nice, nice. So yeah, and then this this season, this is our second season, second year of doing the podcast, and we've expanded it to uh, having professional uh, film industry. Uh, marketers and and people kind of the unsung part of the film business you know when you talk about trailer editors nobody Mm -hmm. really talks about who they are and what they do Um, they have their own little you know circuit and they have their own Clio's and golden trailer awards but they don't really have a big public face because the marketing of the movie is what's up front Mm -hmm. so we started interviewing those guys and And that's where you met Nomad and then Nomad we met actually through my son's uh Guitar, yeah. guitar class, guitar school, uh, which is guitar ninjas. Guitar ninjas. Jason Landon, guitar ninjas. That's in Burbank. Right. Shout out, man. those guys <laughs> yeah. are awesome. Yeah, give them that they shout know how out. To teach guitar. Trust me. So Nomad nice. was uh, cool enough to guest. He did a little. Uh, what do you call that? Little. I did a guest workshop over at yeah, the yeah. Guitar Ninjas workshop. Uh, Brick and Mortar in in Burbank, and uh, that's how we met. And then we met there, and then he was saying that he did some of this other, you know, like the background music stuff and. You know, I'm a big fan of uh, Night and Day and <laughs> Mr. And Mrs. Smith, and so it was cool to hear about that and the work that you do when you when you get do backing, you know, guitar and all the other stuff that yeah, Nomad because does. You're, you're, you, you know, you're trying to create a uh, mood and and mm-hmm. and a feeling in people. It's just this sort of excitement or like like this level of excitement that is going to propel them to purchase a ticket in mm-hmm. a week or two. So mm-hmm. like, you just want to create this sort of heat in the person. Yeah, and you That's do right. that through music. That's right. It's the greatest in. Perhaps one of the greatest intangibles. Sorry, <laughs> not me. One of the greatest intangibles. Yeah. Yeah, and music has that power. So yeah, it's it's really exciting. Uh, and now, Ted, if you would also please talk about your new startup called Bitcast.fm. Yes. Yeah, so Marcus uh, came to me halfway through our our last season, and we hooked up, and we started communicating on Twitter and and elsewhere, and met up in person. And he had this great idea of cutting up podcasts into clips. So podcasts is, you know, roughly an hour long, 20 minutes to an hour long. But sometimes when you want to share it, you want to share just an idea, just a minute, just 30 seconds. Well, like in the case of this podcast, it's like there's really only a minute of it, minute of it that was very good at all. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, like this podcast, I would pick a minute from each of us and say, this is the best minute from this 
this. Oh, can you this add guest. it? Like, can you can you smash chop stuff up. together? Chop, chop, chop. You can smash stuff together, but the way that we're building it is that we'd build it by hashtag. So we'd have hashtag nomad, hashtag TJP. Okay. You know, gotcha. So you build it off hashtags, mm-hmm. and if you follow the TJP hashtag, you would run into the stuff that's on my podcast and the stuff of me on here talking about my podcast. So, and it's kind of it's a way to break a different way to listen to something when you're interested in a subject matter and you don't necessarily want all the other fat of us hanging out talking, which oh. is so much of what we do as podcasters so, and with 700,000 podcasts live in, in the, in the podcast sphere. It's right. A so lot if of you just wanted ground. to hear podcasts that were talking about guitar ninjas, you'd put hashtag guitar ninja, then you'd click there and then you could scroll through every time that was mentioned. Right. Yeah. Or whatever and, your interest is, sailboats or exactly. And, and of course, dipping or whatever. you know, garbage in, garbage out. So you need a little more, you need a little, you know, curation on the front end and then mm-hmm. you're working it out. So we're, we're building the platform right now. And then as, as we move forward, we are the, you know, he's, he's in uh, Australia right now, shopping it around to a startup conference and I'm here right. talking about it here. And right. Ted, can I yeah. ask you? That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. You, you didn't, Ted tutored me on the whole podcasting school, right? A little bit. And I, and in exchange, I taught his son Bryce guitar lessons. Cutest kid in the world. Uh, great little guitar player, too. But your um, daughter's cute. Yeah, Jewel Marjorie's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Terrible um, guitar player. So, <laughs> I haven't heard her play. I she does know. the violin. Oh. Gotcha. I'm sure she's amazing. Ah. So, so violin Ted, you, ninja. Nev- you never really <laughs> you never really told me about Bidcast. You told me about other, pla- I guess, because you were still in I was, yeah, early development. Yeah, we didn't, we hadn't really started that yet. So this okay. is really new. This is this year. Because I'm getting like a little gel. Oh, I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got this thing over. Yeah, actually, you don't yeah. tell me about it. You tell everybody else. You actually, know. Ted t- Ted came to us before and said, "I want to surprise Nomad yeah. with Aww. this on bad. the Thank podcast." So cute. don't say anything to him. Okay, really, so like that was faces. the it cakes was, in the other room. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna hand grab it. <laughs> so uh, that's really cool. So the whole startup world is, has anyone else here tr- attempted the whole any startup kind of endeavors because it, it's it's its own kind of ecosystem it's right? amazing yeah yeah I, I i tried to start a a company where we got uh real estate agents to donate uh i think it was it went from seven to ten percent of their commission to the school in the area oh wow where they were selling houses so that we could support the school systems and that just fell through. It just, oh, it didn't was do people. Very well. well, no, it just. So surprising. To me. <laughs> really? Do you think? Yeah. Well, now they're doing it though. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, oh, really? Now, now real estate that agents. That is genuinely surprising. Agura Hills and Calabasas are doing it because they realize this is where their clientele are going to be coming that makes from. Sense. Yeah. The yeah. people that are moving there to send their kids to the schools. And the more money the schools have, the better the schools are, the more property values are for the realtors. And the higher wow. the commission is, so the better they can afford to pay a they tried something little land yap. They tried something right. a tad similar. I don't know exactly the semantics in your Belinda, and it just yeah, like immediately fell through. Yeah, it's, it's my idea is to have for adults that have to take their kids to really crappy animated movies like Ugly Dolls, which I had to see with my kids. <laughs> oh my Are you okay? While your kid goes in there, you get another screen with your own headphones, so you can watch. You know, Your that go in thing. the canyon yes. in the back oh, of the theater. That movie is <laughs> yes. oh, wait to see delish. That. Go see, see Echo in the Canyon. Someone can steal that idea. Just... We're going to break for commercial. That is a great idea. Uh, I'm thinking VR, visual That's reality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Do you watch Friends? Do you watch How I Met Your Mother? Then, then you, you should, should listen, listen to How I Met Your Friends. Hi, I'm Kathleen. And I'm Julie. And we are the ladies behind How I Met Your Friends, the podcast that explores the similarities and theories of Friends and How I Met Your Mother. Every week, we watch an episode from each show and dive deep into the crossovers and catchphrases. So if you've ever noticed the similarities between these fantastic shows, come check out our podcast. You can reach us on social media at How I Met Your Friends Pod or email How I Met Your Friends Pod at gmail.com. Breeze some s- Any day. Well, I'm ready. I'm ready. When you need magical appraisal, you won't find a wizard as wizened as Wizard Quaff. The world is expendable in the grand scale of my hatred for creatures beyond my understanding. And you, Megas Elgar. Even if he has some peculiar preferences. Abominations! Curb your tongue! Lest you uncork my lust for opiates! You can hear Wizard Quaff and his exciting adventures in the upcoming radio comedy, Megas Elgar. 
Visit MegasElgar.com to download your copy today. Thank you. I will do that. Uh, I love listening to the different commercials for all the podcasts. And Indeed. It, they're so exciting. Marvelous. What everyone is doing, and it's just so creative. Now, Zach, one of the many, many things that is listed uh, in your Twitter bio or in your Wikipedia page is that you're a, a blogger. Were you an early ad- a, a I was writing short stories uh, in my high school paper and then I, in college throughout. And then I started kind of blogging. Yeah. I mean, that back then it was, I would just call them short stories and then they were funny and I would just send them out on email blast to people and everyone liked mm-hmm. it. Oh. I was reading the short story and I got to be honest with you, I felt like it was really good. And I was like, oh my God, like this is like a non douchey Tucker Max. Like, this yeah, I is understand. Like, like, <laughs> when Tucker Max came out, everyone was like, you got to read Tucker Max. And I read his book and it was the biggest douchebag parade I've ever oh, seen. It was, but it was, I actually, but it was funny oh, no. and it sort of like, it brought I you in. Yeah, I couldn't believe the guy got away with that stuff. Yeah. Explain and describe. Tucker Max is this guy who's just, he's just a douchebag, but he is like a. <laughs> is that on his business card? Yeah. Right there. Yeah. It's a douchebag slash asshole. Those are his poly masks. Poly um, <laughs> and so. But he is a great writer. I mean, you can't take that away from him. He's he a great... would write stories about partying, hooking up with girls, and drinking, uh, and yes. like going, you know, and just kind of like bro stuff, as mm-hmm. they would call it. And they made a movie. Um, I hope they serve yeah, being hell. I hope they serve being hell. But there were like instances where yeah. he would like go on these tangents where he would talk about like his inner feelings and stuff, and you were like, oh my god, like he's really ethereal. And then he would curb that with going like, so anyways, <laughs> I was trying Kill to bang him. Yeah. So I banged her in the yeah. bathroom. <laughs> like that's really what it was. But that, I'm not saying that was you at all. But I was reading it and I was like, it's so like engrossing. And I was like, oh my, and, like I and I apologize if that. But I was just like, this is like if I. If I had picked up, I wish you had like a book of stories. I like, do. I wish I. Oh, you do. Okay, yeah, great. It's, yeah, it's called Pom. Talent Will Get You Nowhere. <laughs> Talent Will Get You Nowhere. Yeah. Oh boy, that is the truth, ain't it? That's the truth. I will say you are uh, a great storyteller. Hey, I got prophet. you on my He's show. <laughs> hey, that uh, book no, no, has no, a lot no. of good. No, like, talent didn't get me on your show. <laughs> Knowing somebody got me on your <laughs> show. Connections. There you go. Let's yeah. talk turkey here. That's yeah. chapter two. See? <laughs> All right, so could you please, gentlemen, and may I give a shout out to Michael in the booth, and I, I don't even know your last name, Michael, but Michael's in the booth with Thomas and Lane today. It's Telep. Michael Telep. Michael Telep yes. is with us. Hey, and Michael. Round of applause and for the production. Round of applause yeah. for, <laughs> for RIT. We can't do this. Don't RIT don't for guys. graduating. Not such... too loud. Not too loud. You'll oh, blow so. the mics. <laughs> so please click on Zach's... Uh, Recent blog post, the story of the hippie girl I dated in 1994 who went on a toilet paper protest. Yes. Now, and is that Susan gross. Day? Now, is that actually her? <laughs> that, that sounds is, that is Let Susan Let me tell Day. you, everyone who saw this goes, dude, I cannot believe how hot your girlfriend was. And I go, yeah, that's not my girlfriend. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's a girl who that uses called, toilet paper. I Googled sexy hippie girl online. <laughs> <laughs> because you got to know how to get people's eyeballs Attention. on these stories. I know, you know? her, though. I know, you know her. I mean, it looks like Susan Day, but this is like, that's a more modern. My favorite oh. thing in the world is if somebody wa- sees her and goes, oh, my God, so how? what was it like not using toilet paper? <laughs> And she's like, yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> That's going to happen to her. I would, we could be so lucky that that many people read this story. <laughs> yeah. So, Zach, can you please audiobook this excerpt for us? And I have it right here. Sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Back in 1994, just three weeks into a relationship that I swore would last forever, my hippie, fish-loving girlfriend, Rainbow... That's with the French spelling. ...announced that she was, quote, giving up toilet paper as a way to preserve the environment. I'm sorry, what? I responded. (laughs) Look at the facts, Rainbow said. Every time we use a prefab product like toilet paper, we are destroying not only the rainforest, but the redwoods and like all the natural resources of our planet. It's a no-brainer for me. Well, it's a boner killer for me, I thought to myself. That's the Tucker Max part. (laughs) (laughs) If Rainbow wasn't so fascinating and beautiful, I would have run away immediately. Instead, I did my best to question her plan. So, like, what are you going to use when you, uh, (laughs) you know, go to the bathroom? I asked her calmly. It's called Himong Hill Hemp Cloth from Thailand, she explained. <laughs> A guy who I met on the last fish tour introduced me to it. It's made from <laughs> undernourished plant cloth and hemp fibers, and it originated with the Himong Hill tribe. And for like 2,000 years, their community is like the healthiest in the world. There you go. So that was 20 years ago, and I guess that yeah. was a deal breaker. I mean, not an immediate deal, but ultimately it was a deal breaker because- It was you're... just weird. She was so like- <laughs> She was just, yeah. the tr- the, I mean, if you read more of the story, you'll find out more about oh, her. She I was a total it. trustafarian, which was like the rich hippie kid who had the new forerunner. And like, yeah. 
you know, right. could yeah. afford to go uh, instead of like camping on. when we would go see a concert. She'd get That's, a hotel. She like, could afford oh, to dry clean yeah. her cloth yeah. TP. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't know. To me, you look like a two ply man. <laughs> Thanks. Oh. <laughs> but then you then you go on to say that you once the internet was a thing you started googling. Yeah, well, her. yeah. I mean, I think we've all been guilty of that, right? Low key stalking. Yeah, but, but I mean, we, yeah. Well, I actually had an experience with a girl in high school who I actually wrote a story about it probably a couple years ago about how I just can't find her online anywhere. She doesn't exist. I've checked all the obituaries, mm -hmm. and she's gone. Like we dated in high school. We had like a really beautiful like relationship she in high meant school. something to you yeah and i was like yeah. i wonder what she's up to i can't find her what's her name I, let's see let's give a shout out i thought you were gonna say we we're gonna find really her we'll back kid, her and i wanted to meet her <laughs> <laughs> and here she is right now I'll, i won't use her real name but uh, oh well how am i gonna oh, find well, her how are you gonna Sarah find Smith. her you don't use her real name <laughs> uh let's just say that i never found her and this was a similar situation with rainbow um <laughs> no toilet no toilet paper <laughs> rainbow oh that could so you please my friend that tells me my buddy my buddy michael burke who's an actor he goes, oh, maybe Rainbow knew my brother Timber when she was on tour. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, his name was Timber? He goes, well, his name was Tim Burke, and he just cut off the K-E and became Timber, Timber. and walk around like, I'm a tree lover. My name is Timber. <laughs> oh, oh, no, because that means you're Crazy. chopping down the tree. Right. That's true. Anyway, mm. so I couldn't find her. Right. And I had Googled her and everything. And then I ran into this girl at the Grateful the Dead and Company concert at the Hollywood Bowl. So you you looked like for her online and you found her in real life. Yeah, which was really weird. That's fantastic. And you recognized her. At first, I recognized wow. her, but she was she one of those. She had a little hemp on her the back of her shoe. Yeah, no, she was still <laughs> dressing like in the flowing dresses and all that. But she had her kids with her, and that's like a thing now with people my age. You bring your kids to the dead shows because <laughs> you just want them to get high at age six, I guess. No, but the thing know. is, going to a dead show makes kids. <laughs> right? right, I guess. I mean, so I do know that she was one of the hippie parents with the kids and i was like hey what's up and it's just one of those things if you run into an ex you haven't seen in 20 years and you see their kids you start thinking mm -hmm. wow where's time gone what's going on here you know and i'm only 31 wow <clears throat> Right, so oh, geez, you started this ordeal when you were eight. <laughs> wow, yeah, I was pretty, one of those kids. You know, that's pretty bold. Yeah, there. <laughs> but so I thought maybe we could go around the room and talk about whether or not you have low key stalked or high key stalked mm. anyone and or found them, Lori. <laughs> um, yeah, I actually not my not my any of my exes, uh, but my a friend of mine's ex, I. Uh, low key stalked their girl, their new girlfriend, mm -hmm. and like looked up all, all these photos. And now I follow the girlfriend on because <laughs> I'm like, she's actually kind of a cool person. Okay. So I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, I hate that I like her, but she's like, she's, I don't know. I just, uh, I think she's, but yeah, that's how I started the low key stalking. Mm -hmm. Wow. Anything, Ted? No, I don't. I don't uh, dabble in the past too much. Uh. <laughs> I mean, if you're married, answer, like, how much answer. of this are you going to confess on a podcast? Anyway? Well, I tell you what, what I do stalk is I stalk some of her friends because you know okay, you want to make sure that's, see, that's that's interesting. That's on the oh, level. Yeah. Like, how, I can see that. Yeah. How do you stalk? Who do you stalk? And how much of the stalking does she know about? I think she knows about all of it. <laughs> do you look at her fa her Instagram account? Like, are you logged in? You can read. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's on see? my phone and her phone. Now, yeah. my wife does that to my son, same age as you. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And I don't like it. I'm like, you I don't, don't like want to do that. I'll let my son have his own life. Okay. How, how old is he? He just turned 13. Not so, yet. Well, they still have Not their own yet. lives. <laughs> Not yeah. oh, he's still going to have his own life. But if, you, if, you, if you're logged yeah. in You might as, as well them, know about it. The only way to really know what they're talking about is to log in as them and see the inboxes. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't. I cut the line there. You know, I mainly just want to know- how things are going and, and everything. And yeah, there's a lot of trust there. I, I agree with the whole yeah. trust thing, but you know, sometimes, Can, sometimes things happen and then you want to, mm -hmm. you want to feel out an, an idea. Are you, also, are you following Riser Selwyn? Are you? I don't know. Okay. Is that your, <laughs> that's my son. That's <laughs> a a right, wonderful everybody. friend for him to have. Uh, yeah. I mean, sure. can, you can kind of tell from your kids, friends, whether or not mm. they're in pretty good shape. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good point. And yeah, and you get to discover their interests a little bit. You find out about whether dancing or where they're going, or right. What they like to do. Well, or, like Audrey you know, wants to start a vlog, and I'm like all encouraging, and I want yeah. her and her friends to do this because, hey, I'll huh. help you. I I need more things to produce because you're a startup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> startup dad. So it's good. Give her something to talk Ding. about. Well, Audrey's going to be featured in in a little bit. Um, low key tease for the, <laughs> the 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 big finale of the show, but um, 
they they got here earlier and they were sitting out on the deck and I was like, oh, wow, this is going on. Because like, I don't know what's going on online. That's why I do a show about it so I can figure it out. <laughs> but I was like, oh my God, Taylor Swift is going on. So I went out to the deck and I was like, well, she's a girl. Um, how old are you, Audrey? 13. 13. Like, she, she's an adolescent girl. And like, and there's always like a possibility that a 13 year old does not like the Swift, but you know, it's not, the, it's not very high. Swift. Yeah. Did you just so, say the Swift? I did. Okay. All right. What, your do, hips. what do you like, think about the Swift? <laughs> are you guys, oh, a, I, she's all I about think it. she's really cool. I watched her music video that I'll be going over. I think the day it dropped a couple hours after when it was number one on trending. And I really thought it was really cool. And it was a cool message as well. Mm-hmm. What do you think of really baby like, face? <laughs> <Who>? <laughs> Talking about Red Skelton. Mm-hmm. And any, other, other, any other stalking no, stories? Jenner. Before we move on to the Swift, any other stalking I, stories? Well, do you have one? Uh, no, no. I, 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 this is funny. You know the new app, Marco Polo? It's a video chat app. So you could take a quick little video of yourself. Hey, guys, I'm over here doing this. And then whoever's in that stream with you, your friends, they see it. Uh-huh. So actually, we use it for my family. My, I call them my girls, who's my wife and my daughter. Mm-hmm. So when one of us is traveling, my wife or I, we have the little Marco Polo app. We go around, and, hey, I'm eating this with Nina, blah, blah, blah. Okay, right. So my friends from high school back in New York decide to hit me up on this app here. And oh, they're yeah. like, yo, no yo. man, I'm over here. Hey. I'm in Brooklyn. I'm working today. Check it out. <laughs> He's got his hard hat on. And I'm like, yeah, that's nice, Rob. Good to see you. All right. Now leave me alone. I got to go back to work. So my point is, I'm the kind of person who doesn't really care. Right. I don't mean to be so rude about it, but it's like, I don't care. I, I'm so busy and focused on what I'm trying to do here. So, I yeah. think that here's the thing. I think that one... Once you get into your life, you're kind of dug in and you're into your life. But there's a period in your teens and 20s where you don't know who your people are and you have to find them. Like you got to get knit into your people before you're ready to go. So Rob's just not knit in yet. Oh, no, no. And I, and that wasn't a stab against my friends. I love those guys. And, and I didn't mean that. I kind of almost took that out of context. But my point is I'm not really... It's okay. I don't care who's doing what. Or, or he has old, a different style. Like yeah. he wants to always be at a party. And you're yeah, like, man, I'll yeah. be at a party when I'm at a party. Right now, yeah. Yeah. I'm doing this. Yeah. So everyone's yeah. a little different. Like we yeah. all have social needs and that's what these apps fulfill. They, they're like, oh, you, you want to know you're a part of a community? Like here's an app that helps you do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think even with that kind of stuff though, I think there's still extroverts and introverts. <laughs> Like okay, think, that's good. That's a good way to put it, Lori. Thank I nice. think that people on social media, even when you're in social media, like you're still like, ah, I kind of don't feel like communicating right now. Or you might be like, like I, I found a couple months ago, I found a friend of mine from high school and I was like messaging him and mm-hmm. then he just kind of stopped messaging me. I was like, okay, mm-hmm. obviously like that connection that I was hoping to kind of recreate is like done. Is fizzled. So it's like, right. it's one of those things where it's like sometimes you want to reach out and sometimes you just like, eh, no, well, thank you. It saves you time. Yeah. And social saves you time. Media, you don't have to reach yeah. out again to that yeah. person. Yeah. And yeah. social media has definitely the two parts to it. It has the consumers and the producers. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if you're, mm-hmm. if you're on Twitter, you can be on Twitter and just read feed. I call that lurking, yeah. Ted. <laughs> lurking. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if you're into a, a subject, it's, it doesn't matter whether you're consuming it or producing it. Right, but like Lori's point is that some people want to always be talking to people right. and some people want to be solitude. I'm, I'm like a solitude person until yeah. until I want to be around people. And, yeah. and Rob is more social. That's how I, yeah. and, and maybe because I'm always locked up in the studio my whole life. 30 years I've been locked up in the studio. You know, your, since that's I'm, where yeah. you feel comfortable a, at, at home. I'm in that little studio zone and it's like, hey. And I'm also good. like when yeah. you're creating too, at least for me, anyway when i'm creating like i don't i don't want anyone talking to right. me yeah. exactly. oh, my thought pattern is is uh, it's like a flow it's an yeah. intense flow focus. state yes and like, like even even state. like a, like a telemarketing call uh, i'll go i can't I, yeah it scares me because i'm just yep. so focused yeah i live yep. with my aunt and like sometimes when i'm writing or when i'm doing something i'm like i can't talk right now because like even just like like her shouting from like the other side of the room, just saying like, "Hey, how's your day going?" It's just like, ah, no. And I, I have that right. with my husband too because I want right. to be sweet and um, yeah, yeah. What what's the best way to just say I I, I have this thought and I have I have to keep going. I can't converse at the moment. Keep I think it's just hardcore shut. yelling at them. Shut mm-hmm. up. I was just <laughs> I can't accept just your like... carnal wishes right now. <laughs> <laughs> just put, put your clothes nicely. on. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nicely, 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 but in nicely. a sweet voice. Put that away. Yeah. <laughs> 
Simple as that. <laughs> Unless it's chicken fettuccine. Yes. <laughs> oh, I don't need to see I'm it. I'm not I interested. Had, I love chicken fettuccine. <gasps> I love chicken uh, fettuccine. We need, oh, wow. Oh, my uh, gosh. We're going to do, before we have, we're, and I'm still teasing the Audrey uh, Taylor Swifty uh, segment at the end of the show, but like we're going to do Facebook feed time right now, and you're going to need to get over to a microphone, Dina Friedman. Yay. Facebook feed. Dina. Yeah, you can share with Lori. So for Facebook feed time, Dina posted this, and I'm going to let Dina read it as soon as she gets situated. Ooh, now we go in all kinds of different directions. Look at that. Mm -hmm. There we go. Is it going to be up? Yeah, Yeah. they'll put it up on the screen. We got you on a close-up. Okay. So there we go. Um, So I captioned it, Cheryl Ladd about to catch these hands. Um, After Justin Bieber Bieber (laughs) challenged 56-year-old Tom Cruise to a fight, someone came up with a new social media game challenging a celeb 31 years older than you to a fight. Just subtract. This is like... A little bit of mathematics here. Yeah, there's where Just you lost me. Just subtract 31 from your birth year. Mm-hmm. Okay, everybody following. Mm-hmm. Then do a search for celebrities born that year. Let me know who you get. Wait a minute. So, so if you subtract, wait. then you're looking for someone. You... See, that's where the math gets you. Oh, I got yeah. it. Yeah. Older than you, right. Yes. I'm going to have to fight Nick Nolte or something, and I don't, <laughs> don't want to do it. <laughs> So well, is there, like, You'd kick response? his butt. I'd kick his butt. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, um, yeah, so yeah, click on the next one. So yeah, go ahead. We, we have, okay. Everybody was weighing in. So, so do we have to play? I got you, I got you don't some... have to play. <laughs> it's like Rob. Rob's playing, but you don't have to. He's in his hard hat, and he's going to play. So so what are we supposed to be looking up right now? No, you just look at the screen, because it's Dina's post. All right. So you just look at the responses that she got. Oh. Can you read it from uh, where you are, Dina? Gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, so... Who are Should I read like my friends' names? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Joanna said so many good options for me. Stephen Hawking. Oh, she can Paul take McCartney, him. Paul yeah. McCartney. Even the uh, man himself, Muhammad Ali. Mm. By the way, I wow. think some people are not being correct about their age, but okay, whatever. Um, this is a they, really, I, really kind they, of like stealth way to lie about your age. Yeah, they go exactly. too far. It's like, I'm is there no sacred? Bob Ross. Okay. Oh, Bob uh, Ross. Come on, I love Bob Ross. Just pull him by the hair. Him up? Port- Everyone I- she's n- named is dead. Exactly. That's, That's why you win. Oh, there's no, is there no reverence for the people who have passed? <laughs> no. None. That's terrible. None of them. No. Justin Bieber yeah. didn't have reverence for... Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Yeah, but he didn't pass yet. Believe still, me. Uh, <laughs> believe me, I've got now, nobody Ozzie, but dead people. Andy yeah. Scott, I've Tina got... Turner. Natalie got really lucky because she gets to fight Ted Nugent. Mm. But wait, but he's like armed with a bow and arrow. I would say or he's a hard nut to fight. I'm <laughs> yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay, but the thing is, is when you did this screenshot, Louise, um, right. that was before we got some. Oh, uh, late breaking some news. Some TIFO people. Oh, okay. okay. Bill. What do we got? Filipiak. Oh, he's got Bill. Julie Andrews. Oh, he can't take her. She spins. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Joe Joseph um, said, "Looks like I'm gonna get in a knuckle game with Bob Barker." Damn, it's going. Well, wait a second. Didn't didn't Bob Barker take out Adam Sandler? Yeah. Or was that a lucky punch? Was that just one lucky punch? Well, I'm gonna get to beat the crap out of Rita Hayworth. Wait, who? Whoa. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Wait, who? Chris okay. and Rita and hey, Marty Mull are seeing in that business. And I, think there, I think there should be a study drinking game business. associated with this episode. Okay. First yeah. of all, where every yeah. time, okay. where yeah, every yeah, time, yeah. where's the Jameson? Every time an old timey reference is made. <laughs> Um, um, you take a shot. Okay, get the Jameson, please. Lot. I should definitely yeah. do it because on yeah. Big Jameson. Heads Media, didn't they say that the way that they podcast is at least one person is hammered? Like, yeah. For every sound, yeah, a lot of the shows this is the most sober I've ever no, been no, on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like a drinking game for the listeners. By the way, this is his first podcast. Right? So, <laughs> like, yes, Drunk History is like the funniest thing on television ever. Oh, Drunk History. Oh, I love that show. Oh, my yeah. God. It's so good. You, you know, you would be, Zach, you would be Zach, a great Oh, host my God. That. You, you should oh, pick I a know. fight with that guy. Thanks, Mom. Yeah. You should pick oh, a fight with that guy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay, so um, it's before... It's like when my mom says, you should be on American Idol. Yeah. Like, yeah, your parents, why are you not, Zach, your parents are you not watch hosting? television and decide what shows you should be on if you were How doing can... things correctly. I don't That's... understand this Bradley Cooper and the stars. So I don't understand this guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, who is he thinks he's so good? <laughs> How come you're not famous your yet? I love your mom. <laughs> I don't understand this. How come yeah. you're not famous? Why are you not hosting this holy <laughs> moly miniature golf show? Oh, that's my dad. My dad's always like, why don't you just let me call up Comedy Central? <laughs> I'll take care of this. I'll get you a special. You call them up, Pops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Audrey, are you ready for your segment? I'm so ready. If you don't, Ooh, you know, you need to get really close By to the, the way, microphone. did you look up who your guy was, who you'd, who you'd kick ass? Oh, oh, for her, it would be I Justin look, Bieber. I didn't right. look. <laughs> Reba McIntyre, <laughs> all the way. I got Johnny Depp. Oh, you got, oh, you Which can is take, good. I think you can take the Depp. Oh, wow, you're young. That's yeah. Johnny Depp now? 
What China. China. Well, because yeah. you're like yeah. 12, okay. probably, right? There you are. Yeah, you're yeah, 12. Yeah. I got the a same class. There you go. Jerry, yeah. Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer? I think you or know. George Lucas, just for Jar Jar Banks. See, uh, the thing that sucks uh, about Jerry Springer is if you guys fight later on, he has to do some kind of retrospective. Uh, and talk about, that's the thing. Know. I like him, actually. Yeah. 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 I also, oh, have you met him? And I like Danny DeVito. I'm not beating him. Jerry Springer, oh, no, no. Jerry Springer though, he's armed with chairs, and so you have and to take that into- he's got Steve. He's got oh, Steve Wilco. Steve's yeah. Still, oh, he died, I thought. Uh-oh. No. Did the bald guy from Jerry Springer show die? Guys, go to our website. <laughs> he got hit by a chair. <laughs> TIFO.com. <laughs> uh, so what's Twitter trending? Uh, we th- we decided is Taylor Swift. Hashtag, I don't know. What's the hashtag for this video? You need to calm down is that the you name of the video yes that's yeah. the name okay. of her new song so what audrey and i were kind of like exploring pre-show is like it's can we name all of the cameo appearances in this video and it's pretty exciting uh could you describe what happens in the video yes so we went to taylor swift's instagram page and we looked to see where she teased the video and all the people that we that would be in it well first let me say the video takes place in a trailer park and taylor swift appears to be the person with the most expensive taste who lives in a trailer park because her trailer is tricked out. She's and, got a pool, mm-hmm. and you know, everything. What's the video about? It's about really kind of her just coming after people that are coming after her online, correct? Yeah, and her friends and how they're not being... You guys disrespect Carly Kloss. I've had it with you guys. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's literally the intro. Of right? Yeah. Just <laughs> vocal fry and stop making fun of my billionaire friends. Oh my God, vocal it's- fry. It's, it's actually more, it's, I, I don't know. Making fun of my I'm billion. sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, <laughs> no, but I no, feel no. like, is, uh, so I, I just watched the music video before I came here. Is it like, the whole thing is about like, is it a combination of like, uh, uh, people coming after her and her friends, or is it is it more of like a gay? Because it was released for gay pride, right? So right. Yeah. I think it's both of it. I think it's them coming after her and her like quote unquote brand, and going after the community and how she's like not about that. How she's gonna like stand up she's for her and her friends. Them. Yeah, exactly. she's not about yeah. it. Jamie, what do you know about it? Because your daughter is in this video. She's had uh, your daughter, by the way, Clint what? Howard. Are you Carly Claus? Yeah. Yeah. Are you Taylor Swift's dad? <laughs> drink, <laughs> drink. <laughs> Drink. Come on. I said, where's the James? I'll bring it next time. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Jamie. Uh, Taylor called Haley and, and ran it all past her and talked about how Haley felt about it. My daughter's a, a leader in the LGBTQ community and pop singer. Kyoko. And, um, she, she's like one of her best friends. And it's it's so wild to see it. And what I got from it and what I got from Haley is that it's about acceptance and it's about uh, loving everyone and letting everyone be who they want to be as long as it doesn't hurt anybody. And as long as you live in a trailer mm-hmm. park. And as long as you can, <laughs> as, as long as you're, you live far enough away from civilization that when your trailer burns down, the fire department doesn't show up. Yeah. And so, also, I don't think the trailer was really, variables, lots wasn't of variables exhibiting there. fire safety. No, I mean, no. the fire immediately said, but I think, again, uh, that was more of a metaphor, right? Because yeah. her phone like uh, immediately blew up. Yeah. Oh, I have to watch it again. Yeah. Okay, subtext. So it, it's, All right. It's okay, hold on, that. hold on. Sorry, for, uh, yeah. interruption. Okay. Ted's wife just texted me <laughs> right? and said, "Can you tell somebody that it's hard to hear Ted on the microphone?" <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so okay. I'm well, telling we, you now. I okay. will tell nice. you, Ted's Team wife, Ted's and I believe that up. is your legal name. Can you hear? Can you hear Audrey? I bet you can hear Audrey. You All of nice this will be yeah. fixed Audrey. in oh, post. You. The yes. Facebook okay. feed, the audio is never perfect in the Facebook feed, but in post we have a Pro Tools session that Michael is running. And so it's all going to be good. We'll in the meantime, Ted, speak very loudly. It'll be so, almost okay. as if he was Thank here. Thank you, Ann, for that. Yeah. So <laughs> one of the things I wanted to know, because you, you said you're 13. So yes. what what are the things that you think that maybe like we might have missed from the music video or some things that we should take away from the music video that you think are important? I just think that she maybe just like nuance things, how she's like blending up cotton candy and how she's in a pool with like her heels on and like. Just the little details that I feel like I paid more attention to. Okay. And like the message, because everybody's going to take it differently. But I think like my quote unquote generation is going to like, because it's Pride Month. And so everybody's going to be like, this is great timing. And like, everybody's going to be super happy. And she just is like hitting all the right spots, I think, at the right time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And she's always been really yeah. good at that. I think yeah. that is the most succinct anyone yeah. has ever made a point on this well, one. Wow. <laughs> Audrey. Audrey. Audrey, everybody. Audrey. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, you Audrey. You get the guest award. Absolutely. Guest <laughs> award. That, uh, put that in one of your clips, Ted. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, um, was, uh, sorry, what does the cotton candy, mixing the cotton candy and the heels in the pool mean exactly? Like you said. I those, don't know. It's just something fun. Something, oh, those are cool things. Those are just like fun things that she does that I don't think other people do. Like when she was teasing her, I think, two singles ago, um, me with Brendan Urie, like she didn't tell anybody that. about that. She just put up a giant billboard with a picture of a butterfly and like cats and the butterfly and like a bunch of different things about herself. And to go to the song me which did is did you also get a little teary eyed when you saw at the end Katy Perry and her hugging oh yes I that was got great spoiler so alert <laughs> I got spoiler so yes. oh God, trust me Lori. I'm not gonna watch it <laughs> well okay. I'm a 33 year old woman well, I was like oh my god they're friends right, again. So one was a package story, of French story, fries, the other was a hamburger. They so. were feuding online, correct? Yes, Do you were. remember the nature of any yeah. of the tweets? Oh, no, man. I'm... Does anyone... I don't... Dina, look at Ted it. and I feed Dina. all I the know. time. Nobody uh, knows us. Was, <laughs> Taylor it, was, Swift. it was bad blood, right? Taylor Swift was oh, upset because... Blood. Katie knows it. Okay, it Katie bad, Perry. Yeah, Lori knows. Blood yeah, bad song. blood. That's Katie Perry was upset because Katie Perry started dating John Mayer. And she felt like that was a betrayal because huh. Katy, mm. when Katy Perry or uh, when Taylor Swift and John Mayer were dating, she used to confide in John Mayer about all this stuff. So she started releasing certain songs, wow. setting up how she felt betrayed. And then Katy Perry wrote songs saying like, mm. I don't really care what you think. So girl code violation. But you realize John Mayer has dated every, every celebrity yeah, I've, in like I've the dated history him. of celebrities. I have so. dated John I think John, Mayer. I think exactly. John Mayer was dating uh, Rainbow. He was. Because he's, he's, <laughs> he's not, but now he's yeah. hooked up with him at the Great Pleasure Show. Jerry Garcia, right? Well, because yeah. he's playing guitar anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So Audrey, there. so if you're wondering, if you're watching the video and you're like, uh, who's that? Who's that? Well, Audrey has the lowdown and she's oh, researched neato. the topic and we have a screen cap to, to match. Yes. I have a list of a bunch of the cameos that were tagged oh. on Taylor's oh. Instagram. Okay. Go ahead. So all uh, these people, Bobby Burke, Haley Kyoto, Adam. Oh, well, the video is going Kyoko. to Kyoko. Kyoko. Adam Rippon. Oh, the Todd ice skater. Rick, yeah, he's the ice skater. And Ellen DeGeneres. Ooh. Oh, she got a tattoo. Yes. Yeah. And what does the tattoo say? I didn't freeze it. Um, I think it was like chill summer or something like that. Something and it summer. Was Adam Lambert was the tattooist. Yes. The Lambert. Lambert. Mm -hmm. uh, Billy Porter. Yes, Adam Lambert. Um, Jonathan Van Ness. Oh. Uh, Ryan Reynolds and Tan France, along with many others. Queer, all the Queer Eye guys. Yeah. And a bunch. Who else spotted somebody that we haven't mentioned besides Clint Howard? RuPaul. RuPaul is in it. And all the RuPaul's Drag Race stars. Charlie Sheen. Todrick. Charlie Sheen. Was Charlie Sheen in it? No. Okay. No. <laughs> did, you, did you draw him in? You can draw all him the Charlie. In. All the Charlie. Uh, you say Billy Porter? Oh, Billy Porter was he was the yeah, guy who was said, vlogging. Yeah, he said she said Billy Porter. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was. I, I Wait, did he play the Hulk? He did. <laughs> he played the Hulk. But it was really nice. I think you know Taylor Swift, the high heels in the pool and the blending, the, the cotton candy can be taken as displays of decadence mm -hmm. and uh, excessiveness. Exactly. And, however, when I when I watched it, I was aware of that, but I was also aware of how much she has given of her time and how much she has given of uh, her checkbook. She's opened her checkbook for a lot of very important causes and she opens her heart to a lot of important causes. And I think that is really tantamount to being a, a great artist these days. I don't mm -hmm. think you can hide behind a bush anymore and not be a part of, uh, take responsibility for the adulation of your fans I think it is because they do look to you. Yeah. And people always say, well, these Hollywood stars are mouthing off. They keep their politics to themselves and stuff. But I think there is a certain responsibility that comes with stardom. And I think that she has handled it very responsibly. Some don't, but I think she has. Oh, and she's definitely, been a yeah. great friend. Haley was playing in Boston one night at a, I don't know, 2000 seat hall. And, uh, Taylor was at uh, the stadium. The, what's it called? Not Fenmore. Uh, Fenway. 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 No, the, no, that's the, the a... football stadium there. A anyway. Foxborough. Uh, yeah, Foxborough. Thank you. 
thank you. And um, so she asked Haley to be her guest at oh, Foxborough. Oh, that's so sweet. And so there was this big deal made, and she came up through the stage and all this stuff. And then when Haley was in New York a couple of months later, she was doing a benefit for a halfway house for an LGBTQ community and a, a place called the Town Hall was an auditorium in New York, 500 seats. And Lana Del Rey was there with Haley and they were doing this. They raised $21,000 that night for the halfway house, which is fantastic. And then Haley said, listen, I have a friend backstage and she's never played this room before and she's really shy. <laughs> so, you know, like, don't, don't freak her out when she comes out here and just make her feel comfortable. Okay. Will you do that? Everyone, yeah, 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 you know, and out walks Taylor, and the place wow. went berserk. <laughs> I've never seen 500 people so joyous in my life, and I, I admire artists that do that to people. You yeah, know? you're definitely right. A lot of people, especially in my generation, look up to like the people who are like most famous or most viral or trending. So it's really great when somebody does something amazing. When with they're a good role what they've model. given, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. And it just can, kind of confirms why you love them. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So I want to thank everyone for being with us. Uh, thank you, Jamie Elcroft, Zach Selwyn, thank Nomad, you. Lori Rockenkamp, Ted Willett, Audrey Willett, Lane McFadden, Michael, tell me his last name. Tell up. Tell up. Tell up. Oh, and Steve Wilco is not dead. Thomas Hubble. Oh. Okay, good. Steve. <laughs> and, and Chad uh, is not off. Come mic. on the Thank show, you Steve. Also. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Ted, nope. I'm ready. John Maddox, not. Bill Filippiak, D Dina Friedman, Steve Joyner. I am Louise Palanker. Be safe, be healthy, be kind. We'll see you next week. Thanks.